let's take a look at this first one. Do dogs who eat Purina dog food have more health problems than those who eat a variety of food brands? Is that going to be statistical or not statistical? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that one. Okay. Statistical. Why do you say that? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. Okay, so looking at this, there's a comparison between dog food brands. And depending on how you write this, you could change it from a survey to experiment to observation, right? Um, would we want to like make a dog eat a specific brand of food? If they're going to have like, if we know that they might potentially have health problems, would we force a dog to eat a particular brand of food? Probably not. So this one could be an observation, but you could write it as an experiment. You could technically. Right, well, right, but you could put that on there. All right, on the next one, do people who sit for at least eight hours per day have health problems, more health problems than those who sit for less than eight hours per day? I can't read. Statistical or not statistical? Okay, why do you say that? Okay, we're looking for like a percentage, right? Is this going to be a survey, experiment, or observation? Can you observe somebody having like diabetes or cardio? Probably not. So what are you going to have to do? You're going to have to ask them, right? Now, again, you could do an experiment. I'd be a little weird um, because you'd be like, yeah, you're going to sit for eight hours and have health problems. Again, not the best thing to do, but you could. All right, which brand of dog food has the most protein per serving? Is this gonna be statistical or not statistical? Okay, why do you say that? We're not looking for like a specific percentage, right? We're looking for how much protein do they have, right? Now, is this a survey, experiment, or observation? Yeah. Couldn't you just look on the back of the can and just be like, yo, it has this many grams of protein? Kind of. Um, so I would probably put a toss up between these two. Okay. All right. And the last one, do people who eat a low fat diet feel healthier than those who eat a variety of foods? Is this going to be statistical or not statistical? Statistical. And is this going to be a survey experiment or observation? Okay. Convince me why. Either. Okay. Okay. All right, Gravy, what do you what did you say? Okay, because look healthier and feel healthier than people when they eat a low-fat diet. Okay. He said one key word. You're going to ask people how they feel. So when we're asking people how they feel, is that a survey, experiment, or observation? Survey. Okay. When we base things on, like, feelings, we're asking somebody their opinion. Now, one thing to mention on this is you could kind of, like, change these just a little bit to make them different things like you can make it an experiment if you randomly select things we're going to talk about the difference between these three three today all right so here are the definitions we got surveys or sets of questions given to people to seek their response so this is going to be that you're asking someone and whether this be through electronic or um, paper copy on this one, we have observational studies. That's going to be collect data without influencing things directly. You're going to sit back and watch and collect data. And then experimental studies are going to directly influence 
something, right? So this is gonna have probably a controlled group and versus the experimental group. So survey, why are students missing so much school in the district? A district administrator selects 300 student names at random from the enrollment list and sends a letter to each student home. The letter includes a page to be returned to their school signed by a parent or guardian. The page asks, how many days has your student missed school this year? What are the reasons for the missed school on those days? So this would be a survey because the set of questions are given to people for their response. The design is okay since the names were randomly chosen. Um, biggest thing in this section is that you always want to look for the word randomly chosen, okay? Now there's some issues with this because there's a concern if all the parents are gonna return the form or they can remember that exact reason why the student meant school. So looking back at this example, we see that there's a question that is being asked to the parent. Here's your question. And they also say random. So that's what's gonna tell us, hey, this is gonna be a survey. For observational study, what type of sweetener do flies prefer? So a scientist puts the same amount of sweetener. What's up? Uh-uh. This is reading. This section is a lot of reading. Um, there will be an equation. It's not too bad. It's, it's really not bad. There's one equation that you have to memorize. But we're going to talk about that in like the next couple of days. So don't panic yet. Maybe later. It's a little bit more reading, this unit. Okay. So the scientists would count the number of flies that drink from each bowl in four hours. So this would be an observational study because the scientist is providing two bowls and collecting data for which one the flies prefer. Okay. So he counts the number of flies, right? Right. On the next one, it says experimental study. Okay, so this is what you're used to in biology or chemistry. So is there a link between dark chocolate and weight loss when compared to milk chocolate? First of all, milk chocolate is better than dark chocolate. Yes? Yeah. Agreed. Okay, agreed. Unless like you got dark chocolate on like like blueberries or like strawberries. Okay, first of all. Okay. <laughs> So a nutritionist asks five friends to eat dark chocolate along with their usual food for six months and five other friends to eat milk chocolate along with their usual food for six months. The nutritionist then compares their weight after six months to their weight before. So this is going to be an experimental study because the nutritionist is influencing the diet of the participants. Okay. So... This is that direct influence right here. Design is bad though, because the, there are very few participants, but they're all friends. Okay, so that's an issue as well. Like, do your friends eat just about the same? Like everybody eats normally about the same stuff. Like you would all go get a pizza together. Or like you all eat Takis. I don't know what y'all eat. What do y'all eat? Huh? It would be biased. Yep, which we're going to talk about bias a little bit later. Um, that means that the study might not be able to determine other variables such as specific diet or exercise. So you can't generalize to the population because it is biased. Okay. Okay, I want you to read this over, decide if it's a study, observation, or experiment. Okay, and then answer the next two questions. Um, just want to mention on your final exam, there is one question that is going to be like this. So I'm telling you right now, there's going to be one question that's like, here's the scenario. Tell me which one this is. Okay. That's not that bad. So a study of a thousand people aged 20 to 30 asked how much television each person watches each night and how each person would rate their energy level in the evening. The study showed that the people who watch the television for at least two hours every night have a lower energy in the evening than the people who do not watch as much television. So Survey, observation, or experimental? Go ahead. Okay, so, hmm. 
think it's observational. Okay, so what keywords are telling us which one it is? They're asking a question, right? So how much television are you watching? And then they're also asking for people to rate their energy, right? So are we directly influencing them? Are we saying like, hey, you're watching two hours, you're watching this? No, so it's not gonna be an experiment. We're not sitting back and just watching, right? We're asking them to participate, right? The survey. Whenever they um, say like rate their own whatever, that's going to be a survey, okay? So does this mean that watching television for at least two hours every night lowers the energy in the evening? So is that a direct cause? I'm gonna help you on this one. No. Okay, experiments are the only things, are the only way to say that it would be a direct cause. Okay, so really quick, thinking about this, experiments are cause and effect. If I do this, this will happen. Does that make sense? But since we're saying a survey, we're kind of, um, <clears throat> we're gonna have a little bit of error because I could ask you, how do you feel after you've watched two hours of TV? And you'd be like, great, right? I could say the same thing and I would be like, I feel horrible because I just stared at the television for two hours. So it just kind of varies. Now, if you were to do your own experiment, how would you set it up? Well, first you would have to have a population and you would randomly select people. Okay, that's gonna be a keyword that you wanna have. Then you would have a controlled group that did not watch television. And then you would have an experimental group that did watch television. And then you would compare their energy levels. So how does changing the numbers in the data set affect the statistics? Okay, so just a review, because like it's been a while. What does the mean mean? What does it mean? It is the fantastic. <laughs> um, standard deviation. Standard deviation? Okay, it's how spread out the data points are. How spread out the data is and then the median is the middle number and then y'all said mode is not on here but mode is the number that occurs the most often <laughs> all right and then interquartile range is going to be the distance between what huh uh, it's the distance between the quartile one and quartile three. It's where majority of the data is lying. I don't think they did a good description. Yeah. It's been a minute. It's okay. We're going to get there. Okay. So if we take this data, okay, and we have this junk, if we remove the largest number, so we take out 20. What happened between this and this? This and this. What happened? Anything change? Well, I don't want you to look at the data. I want you to just look at this compared to this. What changed? There's what? So mean changed, okay. Anything else change? Standard deviation. Well, let's think about that. If we took off that last number, our data points just got smushed closer together. Does that make sense? So that's why our standard deviation went down, right? 
So we're going to write out here, standard deviation went down, and so did mean. Mean went down, and so did our median as well. So everything kind of just decreased when we took the large number off. Now, what's outlier? I've seen that word before. What is an outlier? What does the word outlier mean? I mean, use your context. There you go. Okay, so it's like on the outskirts. It's kind of like, remember in The Lion King when Simba got kicked out of like the group because they thought he killed his dad, right? He was an outlier. Yeah? What? <laughs> yes. You're doing great. You're doing great. You're having such an awesome morning. All right. So if we add an outlier, what happened to our stuff from here to here? From this mean to this mean, what happened? And this standard deviation to this standard deviation, this median to this median. Everything went up, right? When we add a bigger number, all data, I'm sorry, all stats go up. All stats go up. How do the standard deviation and mean change when you remove the largest number? Remember that standard deviation, let's go back to our data. Looking at this, remember our standard deviation, our mean all went down when we removed the largest number. All we're doing is writing all of that stuff here. Okay, so standard deviation and mean went down. What about when we added our largest outlier, a large outlier? Stats go up. What? Huh? No, no. What do you predict will happen to the mean and the standard deviation if you remove the least value from the data set? Okay, so let's think about this. We remove the largest, it went down. If we remove the least, where's it gonna go? Largest number, it went down. Least value is going to make it go, okay. So stats will go up. All right. So if we add a value equal to the mean, okay, if we add a value equal to the mean, look at what happened to our mean and standard deviation and median and quartile range. Remember, we're comparing this to the original, right? If we add two values equal to the mean, so right here, look at what happened. Nothing changed. But what happens when you add a value that is equal to the mean? Nothing changes. The mean is calculated by adding all the numbers up and then dividing by how many numbers there are. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to get 3 plus 4 plus 4 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 6 plus 6 plus 7. So each one of these dots represents one of those numbers. Okay, go ahead and take a moment, add these up, and then I want you to divide it by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, because there's 9 dots. Take a moment. So each dot represents um the number so like i have one dot right here that means i get one three there's two dots on this four so i'm gonna get four two fours there are three fives oh two sixes all right it's five okay so let's check your work 
of February. I'm going to show you how to do this the easy way. Okay, so if you go into Desmos, I feel like Desmos carries all the time. So if you go to Desmos, what happened was probably. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to type the word, I think you can type the word me. Okay. But you can also go in the keyboard and go to functions. And you're going to scroll down to where it says statistics, and you're going to hit mean. Now you'll get this parentheses, and you're going to type each one of the numbers. And so, boom, it does it for you. Yay! Y'all are not excited. Okay. If you have like a big list, this is really helpful, okay? Now, standard deviation. You're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna go to function. You're gonna scroll down to statistics. I think I might've passed it. Yep. Okay, and you're gonna click on standard deviation. So S-T-D-E-V. Yep, it calculates it for you. And that's going to give us 1.22. That's going to give us 1.22. So the mean was 5, and the standard deviation is going to give us 1.22. And that checks out, because think about it. How far away is 4 from 5? About like 1, right? How far away is three from five? About two, right? I don't know why I said about. It's two, right? Okay. Can you try the next problem on your own? Can you try plugging this in? The hardest part is plugging this into Desmos. Okay, so take a moment. See if you can find the mean and the standard deviation. Uh, all right, let's 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 plug these in. Let's see what you got. So again, you're just going to type that list, right? You're going to get one, two, two, three, 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 four, four, five. I got a mean of three. Is that what you got? Okay, cool. Standard deviation, I'm going to have one, two, three, three, three. Four, four, and five. I got 1.22. Somebody said it. It's the same thing. What do you mean it's the same thing? Okay, so this was a mean of three and a standard deviation of 1.22. This had a standard deviation of 1.22, and it had a mean of five. Well, let's look at it. From three to seven, that covers about four points, right? And then we have over here from one to five, that covers about four points. So do we see how the spread is even? The mean might be different, but the spread is the same. 